I think at a global level, I mean, uh, the, the challenge in energy is also an opportunity. And why do I say that? I say that because there is population growth. There is almost 600, north of 600 million people around the world has limited or no access to power, okay? That also fuel uh, growth. So what I'm trying to say here is globally, okay, the key word that needs to be kept in mind is growth. Growth is a challenge and an opportunity. In the developed nations and the developed world, we are becoming more efficient. Efficient in the way uh, we behave, efficient in the way we construct our buildings, efficient in the way we transport ourselves, okay? But with that in mind, the demand is still there for energy. So the growth of the energy demand will continue. The challenge, in my view, is to provide access, access to that growth. So accessibility. Now, accessibility within our sector, when we say energy, it means distribution networks, grids, high voltage, medium voltage, so on and so forth. To actually provide and enhance this infrastructure requires a lot of capital, requires a lot of, uh, requires the right policies, the right regulations to enable investors and developers to provide such infrastructure. So the enhancement of these infrastructures that will transport to the end customer the access of that power is needed. From our perspective, we see renewable energy playing a big role in that challenge. You can move renewable energy into places that does not have infrastructure. You know, distributed solar, distributed wind, along with microgrids, okay? So these solutions are available and they are actually, when we think about power and energy access, we need to they are not similar. I'm not, I'm not trying to say they are similar. They are a bit different, obviously, in, in regards of the infrastructure. But we do have solutions today. Renewables with microgrids and smart grids and storage, which will allow cheap, accessible power to regions who has no access or limited access to power. Solar and wind or other renewables, it depends which renewable are we talking about. For example, hydro is a renewable and it's consistent depending on the rainfall, obviously, and the storage behind the dam. But when you talk about clouds, does it impact solar panels? Yes, but it's definitely reliable. It's reliable. And if you club it with electrical storage, which is available and also reliable, you can provide uh, sustainable uh, baseload electricity. One example, Chema Solar, the first of its kind concentrated solar power, concentrated solar that works 24 hours. Why? Because we clubbed the solar renewable energy source with thermal storage, which allowed our plant, which is in the end of the day a utility plant that uses solar as a source of as a feedstock to produce electricity on a base load. That by itself was first of its kind. A revolution in the way renewable energy is seen. Now obviously when we go back, uh, when we inaugurated Chemo Solar almost now seven years ago, give and take eight years ago, that solution was a bit expensive. If you compare it to what? If you compare it to the conventional power generation. Conventional power generation could be from coal, could be from gas, liquid fuels, or any other source. So if you compare both, you say, wait a minute, it is baseload, it's renewable energy, it's clean, I like it, 
it's a bit it's a bit expensive if I compare it to the conventional polymers. Today, we provided a similar solution, a similar solution in Morocco, okay, that could provide renewable energy at a base load at 6.3 US cents. And just to put things into perspective, the average cost of electricity in Morocco, and mainly it's coming from coal fired power plant, you're talking about 11 cents. It's basically CSP, thermal storage, and it's a hybrid solution technology. So can renewable energy play a role as a base load solution with competitive, competitive pricing? Today, yes. Today, definitely yes. Uh, depends on the jurisdiction, depends on the country, depends on the geography. Uh, the most advanced in the world, uh, I would say, is Germany today. There is no doubt about that. Homes in the future will start talking to other homes within the neighborhood. You will be selling the f your power, your access to power, to your neighbor. And you will be buying power from your neighbor whenever you need it, and vice versa. And these called the smart systems, the smart homes. So clubbing the power generation technologies, the storage technologies with the smart homes system technology. Is that going to disrupt centralized large infrastructure utilities? In my view, no. Okay, so you will still have large scale utilities because scale matters. Okay, scale matters. With scale, you have efficiencies. With scale, you become more competitive. So you will have both. And, and this solution, this community, smart systems, smart village, smart community, smart homes talking to each other, trading with each other, uh, it all depends, in my view, on the regulation of the state itself, which will allow that flexibility and that agility. Gas will play a very important role in the future. When you look at power generation and power generation sources, generally speaking, you will have a negative growth in coal fire power plants, a positive single digit growth, low single digit growth between three to four percent in natural gas. And then you have a high single digit growth or maybe low teen growth in renewable energy. Okay, and that's the mix. So in the future, less and less coal fire plants will be uh, constructed and developed. And nuclear is at almost zero or, or negative growth. I and mean, you would not see in the future, and these are numbers, statistical numbers, you will not see uh, more nuclear power plants being developed or coal fire power plants being developed globally. Obviously, you will, uh, there will still be uh, uh, new plants, but there will be more plants shutting down than ones are coming in. Okay, that's why you see a neutral growth in nuclear, negative growth in coal. In the UAE, we have a clear uh, mix and clear targets at a federal level and also at a state level. Um, so the UAE is saying that we would like to have 50% of, our, of our energy mix coming from renewable and clean energy sources by 2050. And they have a plan, clear path, how to achieve that target. And Mazdar is and will continue to play a very important role in, to ensure, in ensuring that the UAE achieves its target, be it in Abu Dhabi or Dubai or Sharjah or the Northern Emirates.